Okay, good evening, students. Yesterday we discussed about uh, the viruses, their characters, living characters, non-living characters, and uh, and some other special character, special characters of virus. So again, we will discuss about uh, the meaning and also the definition of viruses. They are non-cellular, not having a regular cell, no cell wall, no protoplasm, no definite nucleus, no mitochondria, no endoplasmic reticulum, no Golgi bodies, etc. So it is ultra microscopic. We can see through only, we can observe through electron microscope only, not with our naked eyes. In which ways it causes diseases and uh, intracellular, it functions only inside the living organisms and uh, obligate parasite must be a parasite, not a saprophyte or not in a symbiont. Made up of a nucleic acid surrounded by a protein coat. I told you already a nucleic acid is in the center surrounded by protein coat. This protein coat uh, is made up of a number of protein subunits, those are called capsomeres, and uh, this nucleic acids may be RNA or DNA, not both. That is the unique characters of uh, viruses. So now there is a little variation in the genetic material of viruses. So some viruses having single-stranded DNA, yes, yes, DNA. For example, polyphase virus, parvoviruses. Etc. Some viruses with a double stranded DNA, there is a TS DNA in T4 bacteriophage herpes simplex virus. And some viruses with a single stranded, single stranded RNA, that is yes, yes RNA, example, tobacco mosaic virus and polio virus, they are having a single stranded RNA. And some viruses with a double stranded RNA, TS RNA, that is a rice dwarf virus and a wound tumor virus. Some expressions in the genetic material. We generally we know that plant viruses generally contain RNA and animal viruses containing DNA. But a little exception in this genetic material here, cauliflower mosaic virus and Dahlia mosaic virus contain DNA. Animal viruses containing DNA, but influenza viruses, roses, sarcoma viruses, and HIV containing RNA. So, this is an um, exceptions in the genetic material. Next, remember this is very, very important. A tobacco mosaic virus cannot infect a cauliflower mosaic virus. A cauliflower mosaic virus cannot infect a papaya mosaic virus. That is, there is a specificity in the infection. Generally, the infective nature, the infecting a plant, etc., attributed to the nucleic acid and the host specificity, a particular virus, particular a plant, that is by the protein coats. Life cycle of bacteriophage, this is uh, very interesting. It exhibits two types of life cycles. Number one, the virulent or lytic life cycle. Virulent or lytic life cycle, of course, this is not visible, this is not down. The virulent lytic life cycle. In this life cycle, the bacteriophage causes lysis of the host bacterium. The second one, temperate or lysogenic, no down, this is also not clear, temperate or lysogenic life cycle, lysogenic life cycle. In this, the phase DNA becomes integrated with the bacterial genome but causing no harm to the host cell. So, let us see in detail these two cycles. So, the first one, Virulent life cycle, note down, virulent life cycle. In this, 
replication of the virulent phage in the following stages. The first one, the adsorption, that is, this bacteriophage, bacteriophage attached to the bacterium with the help of these uh, tail fibers, etc., the structure we know, the help of tail fibers, it attaches on the bacterium. Then I will tell you again later. In this penetration, the bacterial phase enter into it, enter into it, and uh, these tail fibers produce a type of enzyme that is called lysozyme. This lysozyme creates an opening in the bacterial cell through which the bacterial phase injects the DNA or the nucleic acid into the bacterial cell. And, uh, and then what happened? The bacterial genome, the bacterial genome, when once entered into it, it produces the phase particle. Then once the, uh, the viral genome enter into the bacterial cell, it controls all the activities of the bacterium and prepares the phase particles, that is head, tail fibers and contractile uh, sheath, uh, prongs, etc, etc are prepared. And then later they are synthesized, they are just assembled all the particles, assembled and form into bacterial phases and later the breakdown of the bacterial cell takes place and uh, the bacterial phases are released out. For this takes just 20 minutes only. So within 20 minutes, a bacterial phase enters into the bacteria and release out the, with the hundreds and hundreds of bacterial phases. So this is called uh, the first uh, lytic cycle. Lysis means breakdown, breakdown of the bacterial cell and they are coming out. So next one that is called a lysogenic bacterial cell. The next slide we have this the temperate or lysogenic cell. This is uh, more interesting, where the first two stages are common, absorption and fighting a suitable bacterium and attach with the bacterium and then these tail fibers produce an enzyme that is lysozyme, creates an opening, through the opening the bacterial phase tends or injects the bacterial DNA the viral DNA into bacterium. And after that, what happened? They become friends. The viral DNA and also the bacterial DNA are integrated. So, the common structure is called prophage. A bacterium carrying the viral genome and that is known as a lysogenic bacterium. Lysogenic bacterium. And uh, in the same way, the same way, they are friends together, they unite, but it is not a permanent. After some time, there is a difference between those things and then this phase DNA separated from the bacterial DNA, integration, association breaks. That is called induction. The breakdown of the association between the phase DNA and bacterial DNA is known as induction. So immediately what happens when induction takes place, the viral genome orders to prepare the phase particle. Again, the release of phase DNA into the cytoplasm and synthesis of bacteriophage that bacteria phase components. Phase components and then after complete formation, they assemble together and mature and break down of the bacterial cell takes place. But here one thing you have to remember, when this integrated integration at the time we have this integration of viral genome with the bacterial genome, where it have it lives for some time and uh, it replicates by binary fission so that a new type of bacteria are developed. For example, in the previous one, a bacteria having a genome of capital A and then what happened, a viral genome comes, this may be a small A and it produces, replicates and gives a new bacteria with the genome of capital A and small A 
In the same way, sometimes what happens, it is a pathogenic bacteria and new bacteria will be developed. So that more research should be there to prepare the medicines for this. A particular bacteria, a pathogen bacteria, a particular medicine is there. Now, new types of bacteria are developed here. After some time, again you have an induction and phase particles develop. So this is, this we have this, the first time adsorption takes place and then isogenic bacteria absorption takes place and in integration of this bacterial phase together the phase which is shown in red color bacterial nucleus it is given in blue color and integration of the takes place it is a prophage and then what happens the integration breaks induction and then preparation of the cell particles and the lysis of the cell takes place now let us see uh, economic importance of viruses Viruses, in the beginning you know, means itself poison, it causes diseases and we will can read this economic importance in two subheadings. One is the harmful aspects and in this all harmful aspects, we we'll discuss the viral disease of plant viruses and animal viruses and human viruses. The first one, the plant viruses. Uh, tobacco mosaic virus, I think uh, you know already it causes viral mosaic having the patches of yellow color, green color and white color on the leaf, so it is known as mosaic. The second one is tobacco necrosis, each yellow disease. Necrosis means the killing of the cells, death of the cells and forming holes on the leaf that is by tobacco necrosis, each disease. The name of the virus is just tobacco necrosis speech virus, just like tobacco mosaic virus. The second one is the vein clearing of bindi. Bindi means lady's finger. It is uh, was the commonly called as a uh, bindi. So here the vein clearing. On the leaf, you know already the leaf, the leaf is having the veins. In the veins, on the vein and both sides of the vein, the chlorosis develops. Chlorosis means uh, the, the de death of this uh, chlorophyll, death of the chlorophyll by this uh, virus, so that the vein is clear. That is called vein clearing disease in uh, lady's finger plant. And uh, swollen root of cocoa, cocoa, that is a theobroma plant. Swollen shoot, the shoot become the stem becomes swollen. That is the disease. And the leaf leaf roll of a potato. In potato plants, rolling of the leaves takes place because of this viral infection. And uh, in papaya, also there you can find leaf curl disease. Leaf curling, curling of the leaves takes place. And the spike disease, that is uh, end of the branches or end of the tip, uh, you can have a dead spike-like structure, a stalk-like structure develops. Another is called the bunchy top of banana where you can find uh, the crowded leaves at the tip, that is uh, the rosette of leaves, the leaves become shorter and the stem become shorter and the fruits become very small and plant become short, that is due to the viral disease. So, see this animal diseases, uh, chicken sarcoma disease and foot and mouth disease in cattle, encephalitis in horses, distemper in dog, that is called the mad dog, and the rabies disease it is highly poisonous, it will to any person, it will become uh, very dangerous. So, these are the disease of animals. The human diseases can have uh, a number of diseases caused by the viruses, the smallpox disease, the rabies disease, the polio disease, mumps, dengue fever, sores, severe acute uh, respiratory syndrome that is due to the respiratory fluid it spreads from one person to another person. Chicken pox, common cold, these are sometimes contagious, common cold, measles, encephalitis, conjunctivitis that is metrosi and uh, the AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome that is AIDS disease. For which we have some elaborated uh, talk on this 
the eighth disease. So, kids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The syndrome means a group of symptoms, not a single symptom. A group of symptoms known as a syndrome. It is caused by human immunovirus. Robert Gallo, 1980, first time reported the disease. And uh, it is a group of virus that is called a retroviruses group. Generally, in all uh, animals, you have high immune system by the lymphocytes, lymphocytes. But what happened here? This virus infects the lymphocytes, T4 lymphocytes, and uh, the immunity will be reduced. Once the immunity is reduced, every pathogen will attack. Generally, because of AIDS, nobody will die, but this immunity system will be reduced. It is very susceptible to any disease. But at the time, the opportunistic pathogens like TB, microbacterium tuberculosis, and pneumonia causing bacteria will attack. That will do the test. So now let us see how this AIDS virus. Generally, to take the tobacco mosaic virus or bacteriophage, there you can find a, a nucleic acid surrounded by a protein coat. But here, in addition to the protein coat, you have outer capsid is there or enveloped is there. So these are called uh, enveloped viruses. Enveloped virus. So in this, what happened? Two groups of RNA is there. Two groups of RNA. That is surrounded by a protein coat, and the total you can have a capsule so that you cannot kill it. You cannot kill this one. And now let us see regarding the uh, AIDS. What are the symptoms that you have in AIDS patient? One is general fever. That is a fever is a common disease or common symptom for all disease. Fever you have, and gradually body weight will be reduced and then lymph enlargements, lymph enlargements takes place, the lymphocytes, the headache, fluidness for a small thing, they will be tired. And then dry cough and then persistent diarrhea, diarrhea, motions they have, persistent motions. So based on these symptoms, you can predict and also after the consultation of uh, an eminent uh, or specialist, we can confirm whether the person is having AIDS or not. Now, what is the mode of infection? How AIDS come? See, these are possible ways of infection. The first one is sexually transmitted. Sexually transmitted this. Uh, contact with uh, many persons. So that's why one individual having one partner. So otherwise if he visits many people there is a chance of attacking this case. And another thing is issue on organ donation. Organ donation is a welcome donation. Many people are doing or accepting, the society is accepting. But the thing is while donating or adopting it should be tested. If any disease is there or any AIDS symptoms are there, so that you have to do. Otherwise, the receiving person will have this disease. And then using unsterilized syringes. But now it is uh, reduced, uh, syringe, using syringe is reduced now. But some people using the uh, unsterilized syringes, even at the time of uh, blood testing also, you insist that you have a new blade for taking the blood etc. And uh, shared needles by drug addicts. So they really, these are uh, addicted people. So what they would do? They used to go to a remote place, and four or five friends. They used to share their needles. Among the five, anybody is having an AIDS that will be contaminated to the next person. And then infected mother to the child. So a woman is infected. Stop pregnancy so that it will go to the next generation that is the children. And even through 
first feeling first feeling also is this is passes from mother to child so these are the causes many causes are there for this infection so these are the some of the causes to infect the kids how to prevent so the thing is prevention is better than cure after having the aids there is no cure no medicine etc but even medicine that gives a chance to live for some months only not completely cured so how to prevent the first thing is stop sexual contact with many persons very important so that you, you can prevent the disease even then adopt a prophylactic measures so that you can stop the contact or the transfer of the disease from one person to another person and proper serological screening of the donated blood that is available in blood banks but sometimes if a particular blood is needed you can call people to get the blood at the time with a hurry you cannot transfuse the blood from one person to another person what do to do you have to do the serological test and then only it is allowed to pass to another person next so any drugs are there as i told you any drugs are there means so far there is no drug for aids no drug some drugs available in the market which cannot do the disease but help to increase the life span for few months only not totally one just few months and moreover they are very costly just one example the azithromycin is it t is very costly for each dose if you continuously use if a person dies in september he can wait up to december only but no cure for this disease so that should be very cautious and you have tell to awareness to the other people also regarding this disease next oncogenic viruses oncogeny means the study of cancer is known as oncology so in this some viruses causes cancer what is cancer cancer is an uncontrollable and unorganized growth of cells and causing malignant tumors tumor moreover it passes from one place to another place also so viruses like simian uh, viruses sv40 causes cancer some viruses also involved in causing leukemia that is a cancer of uh, white blood corpus hpv human papilloma virus causes uh, cervix cancer in female next viral vaccines so as i told you the uh, prevention is better than cure so before this is comes we can use the vaccines vaccines are highly effective in controlling the viral diseases vaccine is the most effective method of prevention of virus viral infection serious viral infection and then another thing is our body is a defensive mechanism to prevent the disease and also even after that the disease also our red blood corpus cells and t4 sample cells used to kill those positive organisms so in this they inhibit viral replication they are produced inside the animal in response to the viral infection when viral infection comes immediately our system used to prepare the interferons interferons so there are of three types i will tell you later the interferons are the body is a first line defense against viral infection they cause defense to the diseases there are of three groups alpha that develops from white blood corpus cells and beta from connective tissues of fibroblasts and gamma from lymphocytes and killer cells so these three types of uh, interferons develop already in bodies now let us see what are the symptoms of 
viral diseases in plants. Uh, number one may be mosaic, as I told you already, showing the patches of green, yellow, and white on the leaf, on the leaves. So, for example, in the tobacco mosaic virus, we can see these patches, that's why it's called as a mosaic disease. Next is the necrosis. Necrosis means the virus infects a particular place and completely destroys that place and form of a dead tissue and immediately they form a holes on the leaf. For example, tobacco necrosis disease. The third one is the wilt disease. Wilting disease means first you can have these pathogens swallow or eat the chlorophyll so that the leaves become yellow color and then grouping of the branches and the leaves and shedding of the leaves that is called a wilting disease. Just if you happen to see the plant, the plant is just like fire. And then vein clearing, I told you already, this around the vein, around the veins, the upper side of the vein and also the lateral sides that become chlorosis and vein will be cleared. That is called vein clearing that you can find in ladies finger plants. And leaf form change. Actually, if you happen to see a normal plant and infected plant, in an infected plant, the leaves may be showing curlingness and also depressions and rolling. So, these symptoms you can find. Example, potato leaf roll and leaf curl of papaya, where you can find these symptoms. Next, scenting. Scenting means reduction in size. So, the leaves may be very small and compared to a normal plant and infected plant and uh, internodes become shortened and flowers are very small and it produces very small fruits. That stunting nature you can find when a uh, viral infected plant. And the ring spot, circular, chlorotic or necrotic, either a yellow color or a dead tissue are formed the leaves, example tobacco, tobacco plant and uh, abnormal outgrowth that is vein swelling, swelling of the veins takes place and foliar outgrowth, sometimes you can find uh, tumors in the leaf or galls in the leaf, for example citrus, grapes, uh, tomato, etc. And uh, how this virus is transmitted from one place to another place or from one plant to another plant. In this, the first one is graft transmission. I think you know grafting is a technique where you can get a new plant or a good plant from a normal plant. That is, you can take a normal plant that is, it should be cut and then you can find to take a new plant that should be fixed on the plant so that these characters will get. So, this is called the stump and this is called the scion. In this grafting technique, either the scion or the stump, stump or scion may be infected with a viral disease, other plant, the new plant, the grafted plant will get the disease. So, Generally, it takes place in uh, potatoes and uh, turnips and many ornamental plants. Ornamental plants are grafted. This is a technique to get a new plants with a uh, new high variety, new variety. And uh, the second way by mechanical transmission. Mechanical transmission that this you cannot control. The virus infection may be there in your surrounding area that may come through the air and attack your plant. So that may be a cause and through wind the transmission takes. Another thing is some people having the habit of just rubbing the plant in one place and rubbing the plant in another place with the same hand without washing, it may be spreading from one plant to another plant, the healthy plant to an infected plant or infected plant to healthy plant. And then the agricultural implements. Agriculture implements may have you are using many implements, plows uh, and also the sizzles and uh, what's called uh, the uh, spines, etc. You can use. So, through those implements also, 
the disease may be transmitted from one plant to another plant the root contact so the roots which are growing many distance in our house so it will go from one place to another place one plot to another plant etc it may contact with any other plants so the disease may come and uh, the hands of the workman as i told you already just rubbing the leaves like this the same workman worked in one place he came to your house and he taking working in the same place so the disease spreads from one plant to another plant with the hands of working man there are several ways for the transmission the next is the seed transmission if the seed is infected the seed is infected with any virus you can purchase the seeds and so that plant will have this one so that you have a testing of the seeds before transplanting or before spring another is pollen transmission you know the pollination the transfer of pollen from one flower to another flower the and the pollen grains from anther of a one flower plus to more of another flower the same area or neighboring area sometimes with a long distance you know pollen grain having a viral infection the infected the pollinated one is also having the infection the next one is uh, the soil transmission soil transmission means we are bringing soil from some particular area for a plot in a plot and uh, sowing the plant leaves plants etc those things having the viral infection the next one is the todder transmission todder means it is a parasitic plant mosquito this is a total parasite a stem parasite it grows on a plant and it takes water as well as the wood material from the supporting plant so it is called a, a total parasite so through this parasite also the plant will get the disease by fungal spores in atmosphere is a number of fungal spores pollen grains etc so through these fungal spores also carry the disease from one plant to another plant and the by insects we cannot control the insects the insects are moving from one place to another place and one flower to another flower so it carry the disease the last one is the nematodes these are the animals that are found in the soil they are also responsible for carrying or transferring or transmission of the viruses from one plant to another plant and then in the same way see, sometimes some thing we can control but some we cannot control but the spread of the viruses takes place any place any area any time the spreading takes place by all these methods in addition some other methods also there to transfer the disease and uh, at the end we can discuss the significance of viruses so so we have harmful aspect many harmful aspects we have little beneficial aspects also regarding these uh, viruses those are biologically viruses are between living and non living things so there is a idea where this living and non living things develop from the viruses in two different ways so it has uh, both the uh, virus has got both the living and non living character another thing is this used as biological tool virus is very simple you know there you can find a just a type of nucleic acid surrounded by protein coat very simple so it is used in a molecular biology to study the structure of the proteins and structure of dna and rna and in genetic engineering and medicine also it is used due to their simple structure and the rapid multiplication as you know in this multiplication of bacteriophages within very short time one bacteriophage gives many many bacteriophages so its multiplication is very speedy and used in biological control so many bacteriophages kill the harmful pests infect the plants so that is also a major program where they used as a biological control to eradicate the harmful pests so viruses are used to prepare either that is the liquid part of the blood contain more antibiotics and vaccines very important 
the treated viruses uh, and their and their toxins and their toxin and their toxins which introduce to animals which stimulate the production of stimulate the production of uh, antibodies antibodies so the vaccines are more effective regarding the virus infection and another very important thing the uh, water of ganga is ganges even if you take and bring to your house even for years together it will not spoil it will not any bad smell because of this bacteriophages bacteriophages and uh, some bacteriophages attack the attack nitrogen fixing nitrogen fixing bacteria so nitrogen fixing bacteria i think you that is a rhizobium bacteria which infect uh, the roots of legume plants and uh, supply nitrogen materials those are called uh, root nodules so root nodules having more nitrogen so it may be used that those legume plants are used for crop rotation crop rotation means one season we have one crop the next season we have legume so that the legume roots having this bacterial nodules they enrich the soil so what happen some bacteria used to kill these back this uh, some viruses kill these bacteria is a uh, soil fixing bacteria and uh, what happen when they kill this soil fixing bacteria soil fertility may be reduced soil fertility may be reduced so so it has some uh, merits and some demerits also there regarding this virus thank you